Hi, this is a quick update on Megasplat. Um, this uh, update I'm going to talk about tessellation support, uh, which is still pretty much in the experimental phase, um, but I have a working prototype working, and it's going to need a bunch of work, uh, but uh, it's enough to show off for now. Um, I'm hoping to get this out for the next patch. I'm still waiting on the last one to be approved, as usual, so uh, we'll see how long that gives me to get this going. Uh, but the way it works is that there are there's now a tessellation choice, and you can choose between distance and edge mode, and that controls how tessellation is decided uh, when it decides to split a vert. Is it based on the length of an edge in screen space, or is it based on the distance from the camera? Um, they can each have uh, different artifacts and sort of subtleties, um, so you'll have to play around with them and figure out what works best for you. Um, and then you can see the normal sort of multi-layer, all that type of stuff uh, that you, you normally have. Um, so when you turn on tessellation, uh, it's going to expose some more properties. The first one is the displacement amount, which is basically how much to displace uh, the current texture. Um, the more you do this, the more likely you are to see artifacts from, uh, you know, smearing, things like that. Uh, but there are some nice little features I have to help fight that. So if we look here, we see it's really kind of, uh, you know, smeared and yucky. Um, along these edges. So the first thing we can do is uh, reduce the interpolation contrast. So this is the contrast between blends of different textures and I find that I like it really high when I'm working on uh, terrain without tessellation but with tessellation on it works a lot better if you uh, turn it down and get a, a wider blend radius and that actually helps create a much nicer tessellation. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, by default it pulls from the highest mitmap level um, for the actual tessellation. It doesn't really matter uh, how far away the vert vertex is, it's always going to pull from that mitmap level. Um, so this means if you have like a little dot or something in your texture where it's like suddenly bright uh, in your height map, then it's going to suddenly produce like a spike. Um, and so what I find is to actually use a slightly lower MIP bias here, if you turn this down, you can see it jumping between the different MIP map levels. So if you're going to a lower MIP map level, what you're getting is um, a blurrier, smoother version of the height map. Um, it's also a little faster to look up, uh, which is nice, but uh, generally I find that knocking it down a MIP level or two uh, really helps create a nice tessellation effect. Um, and because we're in edge length mode, basically the edge length is at what size on uh, in pixels do we want to start splitting vertices. So as you increase this, you'll see that you'll get a finer tessellation and worse performance. But as you decrease it, you'll get a coarser tessellation. And um, you know, if you have a value, uh, I'll put it on 18. If you if you look, you can kind of see it swims a little bit as it changes detail levels. And that's just an unfactor uh, thing. I mean, unfortunate thing about tessellation. Uh, it's one of the reasons I don't like the technique is because uh, it, it doesn't. It's not super stable. Um, but, you know, if you're in a fast-moving game, you probably won't notice anyway. Um, so basically, the higher you crank this, the better the quality is going to be because the more it's going to tessellate, uh, but also the worse your performance is going to be. So you really want this as low as possible. Um, there's a thing that happens with GPUs, which is that when a GPU goes to sample a pixel, uh, it always has to sample several uh, pixels to do uh, the gradient lookups and things like that. So uh, GPUs really do not like super tiny triangles. Um, you generally want to keep a triangle over about 10 pixels in size. Um, so, you know, going anything below probably like 12 or 15 is going to start to really degrade performance fast because the GPU is going to have to do a lot more work uh, for every pixel it looks up. Um, so if we switch the compile mode to distance, then uh, we basically have the same parameters for, for displacement and, and bias um, that allow us to control, you know, how much displacement and stuff like that. Um, but we can actually control that with a min and max distance instead. Uh, so this can be nice because you can uh, get maximum tessellation up close and it doesn't matter what viewing angle you have it at. It's temporally uh, stable in the close range. And then you can sort of create a wide enough range to... Um, you know, transition where maybe it's a little bit out of view, but you can kind of see it there as I move. You can see the tessellation coming in um, in that area. And then for that, you control this max tessellation amount. So as I move this down, 
I'm going to get faster performance because I'm tessellating less. When I just move it up, it's going to look better, but you know, it's obviously going to hurt the GPU more. Uh, and this is roughly in uh, in pixel size. So um, so yeah, so there's some some other things I have to figure out. Um, if I come over here, uh, you'll notice that strangely the grass color is different between the tessellated version of this mesh and the non-tessellated version. So I have to figure out why that's different. What I don't understand about this is that this rock up here looks, you know, very, very close to being the same, yet for some reason the green on the grass looks very different. Um, the tessellation works uh, both on DX11, it works on uh, OpenGL, I'm running on a Mac right now, uh, it should work on Metal and Vulkan, um, and, you know, possibly if there are mobile GPUs out there that support it, it should, in, it should technically work. I have not tested on mobile GPUs, I think you'd be, um, you know, you'd have to have a very special case to justify using it on a mobile GPU um, or a low-end, you know, system. But, uh, but if you've got, you know, the horsepower to spare and you're on a capable device, then uh, it is an option, and it does improve the look overall. Um, I did do some looking into parallax occlusion mapping style techniques. Um, there is one I may explore in the future. Uh, they tend to be very expensive because of the splat mapping, um, but I have some ideas about how I might be able to do those uh, and keep it cheap. Um, but uh, but this one uh, is the first one for sort of a um, you know high detailed mode of these textures. So uh, I'm not sure when this will be out. Um, like I said, I still have a lot of work to do on it. Um, there's a lot of different lighting modes in Unity that need testing. Uh, I want to do a thorough testing on uh, different machines, fix any lighting uh, inconsistencies that I can between the uh, tessellated and non-tessellated stuff. Um, it may be that there are reasons that I cannot get them absolutely perfect, um, but what I will do is provide uh, this as a lighting path so that you can have fallback shaders and um, you know, shaders that, that this degrades to in the distance that don't use tessellation that have the exact same lighting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that'll keep me busy for a while. Uh, so it might be a little while before this gets out. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I've got for today. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.